In today's video, I'm going to show how you can use a laser to make millions of dollars by starting your own laser engraving business. I'm just kidding. I don't even know how to turn this on and I only took it out of the box about five minutes ago. So instead of that, what I will be doing is taking you on a bit of a journey as I learn the world of lasers. Now, I know nothing about lasers and I do mean nothing. I know nothing. Nothing. <laughs> So I'll be starting completely from scratch as a complete newbie and taking you on a journey of seeing just how easy it is to get into the world of laser engraving. Because honestly, how hard can it be? Well, let's find out. So let's cue the intro and get on with it. So the first thing that we're going to need if we want to learn anything about lasers is, well, a laser. And thanks to the good folks over at Algo Laser, that's exactly what we have here. What I'm unboxing here is their top of the line Delta model. Featuring a 22 watt laser with air assist, it has a working area of 440 millimeters by 415 millimeters. Now there are two big reasons why I chose this laser over others and the first is that the unit is almost completely pre-assembled from the factory. There's only a few extra steps that you need to do to fully assemble the laser and one of the cool things is that that assembly can actually be done while it's still inside the box making it easy to remove later on. To fully assemble the laser it only took about 30 minutes and a lot of that time was actually spent double and triple checking the installation instructions and guides that came with the unit. The second and probably most critical reason centers around the Delta smart features. Built directly into the device is a smart screen control panel and it's going to give me the ability to do offline engraving. This could certainly be useful in the future if you ever needed to batch out a particular project and rather than constantly reloading it in your PC, you can load it directly from the device. Now it's at about this time we kind of need to talk a little bit about software. Because at the end of the day, even a device as clever and as smart as this requires us to interact with some sort of software. And just like in my CNC video, there are a plethora of CAD and CAM programs that you can use with a laser. The program that you choose to use for your design element really comes down to personal preference. During my research into laser software, there was a clear market leader. Uh, when I spoke to all of my friends who all had lasers, they all universally used the same software. And that software is called Lightburn. Now Lightburn on its own is and can be a complex piece of software and can be intimidating for new users and especially was for me. But learning how to use something like this is going to be critical into unlocking the full potential of a laser. Now I am definitely no expert in this area, but Ainsley from Small Fry Creations is definitely an expert. In preparation to learning more about lasers, I watched a lot of her tutorial videos and her latest video on Lightburn uh, tips and tricks is really great. I highly encourage you to look at those and other tutorial videos if you wish to learn more about Lightburn. And lastly, before I move on, a quick shout out to my friend Vipun at Vipun Envisions Design and Kieran at KJH Woodworking, who sent me a bunch of information regarding uh, cut profiles and all sorts of information regarding uh, lasering and especially settings in Lightburn, who really helped me out. So uh, go ahead and follow some of those guys. I'll link to them in the description below. With the laser temporarily set up on our workbench and before we even think about our first test cuts, I want to make sure that I have plenty of ventilation. Luckily for me, I can simply open the roller door and I have plenty of ventilation to make sure that the smoke exits outside. The first cut we are going to do is a test pattern cut. This is going to help us understand how the laser interacts with our test piece. Alright, so let's hope that for the best on our first test one, off we go. And things are happening, which is good. Smoke is being made. So far so good though, okay. So this is moving very fast, but even so, there's not a lot of vibration coming through the unit, so the pads or the feet seem to be doing a really great job of making sure that uh, the unit stays put. So, so far so good. Yeah. 
Yeah, and there's a lot more smoke now, so obviously the laser's now kicked into overdrive because we can hear the fan in it going, so I guess it's doing part of its testing now. But uh, so far, so good. But there's all the smoke going out, so ventilation is important. So here's our test engrave and let's take a moment to understand what this is actually telling us and what it means when we're using any laser for that matter. There are two main settings that you're likely to be interacting with when you are using a laser. The first one is obviously power, so how much power is going through the diode and obviously speed, how fast the diode is moving across the material. Speed and power, that's the solution. So the purpose of this test piece is to show how those two different settings interact with your material. This is so that you can really dial in the correct laser and speed setting that you want based on what it is that you're trying to achieve. Now obviously it would be recommended and has been recommended to me that you do something like this for all the different types of timber or materials that you're going to be using. That enables you to build a bit of a database to show how your laser interacts with different materials with different settings. It was at this point I decided that it might be a good idea to make a more permanent base for the laser. The decision to do this had nothing to do with the fact that I just lasered through into my workbench. No sir, not at all. At least we know the Delta has a pretty powerful laser and it's worth taking a second now to talk a little bit about the technology behind it. The Delta utilizes second generation COS technology and while I don't fully understand the technical part of this, the net result is that it improves the performance of the laser by around 40%. That's fancy, that's fancy. That's right, very fancy indeed. But what that really translates to is that the Delta can cut and engrave a wider range of materials faster and more effectively. To ensure the laser could be realigned and placed back in the exact same spot should I need to move it, I wanted to make some aligning rings, and what better way to make them than on the laser itself? Each ring will be glued into the baseboard using the laser itself to help align them. The purpose for doing this is so that no matter what happens if I need to move the laser, I can have it sit in the exact same spot again, and this will be important because of the next thing we'll cut on the laser. In Lightburn again, I whipped up a few right angle brackets and cut those out in MDF on the Delta. waiting for the laser to cool down. The fan runs a little bit after the last cut, but I've now finished my kind of spoil board grid. So now I know exactly where the center is and I know the parameters, oh, there we go. Uh, now we know the parameters of our cutting area. So I've come a little tiny bit in, not exactly. So I've probably got another five mil on each side all the way around to play with just in case, but this gives me a very good uh, starting point. So that's dead center and these are 10 millimeter increments as we go. So the great thing obviously about this kind of spoil board is that I can take it out, put a new one in and uh, replace them as I need them. Obviously I'll eventually make a proper table for this so that uh, I can use the proper honeycomb stuff for this which is probably given the uh, smoke that happens especially when you're cutting through. Uh, it's probably a good idea. But other than that, pretty happy with that.
Okay, so let's go ahead and do our very first uh, small project here. So we're going to keep it nice and simple. I've just got this sort of uh, ornament cut out here. Um, I'm going to be using 3mm plywood, just basic 3mm plywood. I've got a couple of samples here just in case. Uh, the settings in terms of the power and speed, I'm going to use the same ones that... Uh, uh, we found out when we did our test pattern before, so we're going to use our settings from that, and uh, we'll see how we go. So let's go ahead and cut this out. Looking good, so far so good. So having dialed in the settings, I'm confident this is going to cut through on a single pass, but we'll see how we go. So from the top, that looks really good. Very nice, clean, crisp cut. Everything looks good. But, and I thought that this might happen purely because I don't have a honeycomb. Um, when we turn it over, we start to see what happens where there's nowhere for the smoke to go. So if I turn this one over, yikes. Now that kind of looks cool on the reindeer, kind of looks like it's uh, coloured in almost. Looks great on that side, not so good on this side. But obviously we've got a lot of um, smoking. Now this is nothing, this is not the fault of the laser itself. This is purely because I just don't have that honeycomb uh, layer on the bottom. Because I don't have that, I'm just going to try something that someone suggested to me. So uh, what we're going to do is I'll try this cut again with this one. But this time on the bottom, I'm going to cover it with um, some masking tape. And that will hopefully absorb all of this sort of smoke damage that we get. Now, of course, you could sand this instead. But we're talking about very thin plywood. So we don't really want to sand too much off this. And I don't think, based on how much this is probably penetrated, I think you'd have to sand quite a lot. And you would definitely go through the veneer. So I'm going to try some uh, masking tape here and we'll see if that improves the cut. Okay, so let's see how that did. So we have our original here, which on the surface Looks fine, looks fantastic actually. And in fact, even this on its own you could keep to add to something. And here's our one that we've just put the masking tape on. And already you can see how on the surface the masking tape has really absorbed some of that uh, smoke. So let's now peel off our masking tape. And already you can tell that it's made a huge difference to the quality of the cut. So as you can see, even on this, both sides, very clean. And that's a huge improvement. There's still obviously a tiny little bit of residue there, and that'll sand out just fine. But that's a huge difference between that and that, as you can see. So there we go, our very first project cut out on the Elgo Laser Delta. The footage that you saw was recorded over a span of 48 hours, so just in a single weekend. And that's 48 hours from unboxing to producing our first project. So the Elgo Laser Delta here is by far one of the easiest devices I've ever set up. It works straight out of the box, very minimal setup, and we were away cutting our first part in, you know, 20 minutes. So as a device, I can absolutely recommend this for any beginner looking to get into the world of lasers and is looking for a very simple and easy way to do so. Now, of course, I did have a lot of help. However, that help really related to the software and not the physical hardware itself. So when it comes to getting into the world of lasering, the devices themselves are very easy to use. And if we specifically look at this Delta, this one was incredibly easy to use. If you're coming from the world of CNC's and you're very used to CAD and CAM, then you'll find that the 
learning curve for getting into lasers is very minimal. You'll find yourself up and running very quickly. Even if you're just tech savvy and you're used to using certain CAD programs, then I do not think that the leap from that to getting into software like Lightburn is a huge step. So do I recommend the Elko Laser Delta 22 watt laser? If you're looking for something that almost works straight out of the box, requires almost no assembly, then this is what you want to look at. If you're interested in acquiring your own Elgo Laser Delta model, then there will be affiliate links in the description below. In the next video, we're going to put the Elko Laser Delta to work. We're going to address some problems that I have in the workshop regarding storage. So if you're interested in seeing me put this laser to work, solving some real world problems in my workshop, then stay tuned for that video. So once again, a quick thank you to Elgo Laser for sponsoring today's video and supporting Aussie makers. So as usual, thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video. Ah, fuck. I lasered into my workbench.